Hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to tie a cased caddis that we use in our lakes up here. Um, it's to represent the Limnophilidae, the, the very large brown caddis, uh, some people call it a traveling a sedge. Um, they're certainly in that, that same family. But this particular caddis does a patchwork quite often of weeds, uh, sand, snail shells, pine pine needles, whatever it has access to, but more often than not it's uh, small swatches of uh, weed uh, debris and so often the casing is uh, bright greens and yellows and browns and um, the larva itself is bright green, almost a chartreuse in color and uh, so I start the fly by tying it on a, a hen's uh, BL724, which is a 2x strong, or pardon me, a 1x strong hook. Um, it's quite large, and the purpose of this fly is to move it somewhat similar to a jig, as if you're fishing walleye in a lake. Uh, so I want it riding on the bottom off a very long leader to a floating line or an intermediate sink line. Uh, the whole idea is to move it very, very slowly, gradually across the bottom, and I fish it kind of in the marge, just outside the marginal areas, anywhere from 10 to 14 feet of water along the last standing weed bed cover that's available to the fish before they hit open water. But keeping in mind that uh, we want to tie this so that it does work like a jig, and what I'll do is I'll take my hook here and I'll just set it at an angle and then uh, I'm going to secure this tungsten bead head in place and I'll just do that by sticking a little bit of Bondix UV resin in the slot of the bead And then we'll add extra weight, uh, a flat lead, on the bottom side, or what will be the bottom side of the fly as it's riding hook, hook up. So we'll just add on a base layer of thread at this point. I'm tying with the Zimperfly Nano Silk 12 aught here. I'll just lay in a good strong base layer. We'll give something for the lead to stick to so that it doesn't rotate on the hook shank itself. I'm running a, a point, point 0.4 flat lead. I'll run, I'll build a couple of layers. But I want to. Um, not have it all near the back end or spread out. I want more of the weight near the front end of the bead so that that bead stays down in place on the lake bottom. And because of the style pattern that we're tying I find that uh, this will taper out have a nice finish when the fly is trimmed back. So one of the things I learned a long time ago when I was a walleye competitor and long before that as a child fishing that uh, when rubber came into the market it's something that fish absolutely love and we have the squirmy worm product that came out and this particular color here the chartreuse or hot yellow is very very close to this particular caddis fly larva so I use this as a tail. It's similar to what people would recognize as the ugly bug or the Peking caddis. <clears throat> but I keep the tail about, about hook shank length. Because I want movement. And then I'll use some porcupine flank, leaving the guard hairs in and the underfur will just create 
cut a small clump of it and I'll put this around the back of the base on the tail section here uh, it's kind of a new material for me to work with so I'm hoping it'll breathe I, I used to run or tie this with a Hungarian partridge flank feather and that certainly worked and we'll just half hitch this in place now I'm going to create create a very long dubbing loop and we'll secure that into place and I will take my dubbing twister my automatic system and I have a mix of, like I said, this, this particular bug has a lot of green in it from the vegetation it cuts, but there's also reds and browns and blacks. So I use what's called a hen's deer hair dubbing. Now it's not just cut deer hair, it's uh, mixed with a synthetic, and it has a small amount of sparkle in it, and I, can, I don't know if you can see the little woolly fibers in here. But this is the base of the pattern and quite often what I'll do is I'll just take clumps of this lay it into the dubbing loop and then I have some that I've already used in a, on another pattern it's just all sort of mixed itself and I'll just again take clumps of that lay it into the dubbing loop I, I'm not fussy or particular um, how much black or how much red there's in there as long as the overall <laughs> pattern is mostly green olives uh, which is the case in the actual casing on most of these particular limnophilidates like I said they're, they're, they're quite large and um, they're a common food source in the winter months uh, along the lake beds and they're crawling around there the trout love them they pick them up and will just gorge themselves on them. You know, they're very, very slow moving. I also find that um, using this during cold fronts uh, certainly is a again uh, because cold fronts I generally fish fairly slowly, so it makes for a great presentation um, to be able to control the fly deep water on cold fronts and have it moving slowly. So now that I've put all the hair in there with the synthetic fiber I'll just spin this and as you can see that's all mixed and now I'll just thin it out just by plucking any of the clumps out of the, out of the way in place it's sort of piled up Now I'll just wrap this with touching turns as we move forward. Stroke all that back, all the material back behind the bead as much as you can. Well, it's a messy pattern, but it certainly works well. It's really a jig fly more than anything else. Um, and that rubber tail has a bit of action on it, so the fish attract to it very quickly. It gives a little bit of life, a little bit of movement. Uh, you don't want to move this pattern in the water too quickly. Just very, very subtle movements, very slow. Um, if you can target a specific area with them, it's great. I'll just whip finish off behind the head here. 
So this material, most of you probably have never seen or heard of. It's uh, absolutely spectacular material to work with. Sounds weird, you know, deer hair dubbing, but uh, I certainly, certainly like it a lot for these kind of patterns. Really robust, really leggy patterns. Now, I'm going to grab my little doggy water bag and put that underneath to catch all the trimmings. Lift everything up and cut it off as close and as tight as possible without trimming that porcupine flank and tail in the back here. So, that's the pattern trim back. Just make sure that that tail is sitting on the bottom side of the hook. And as you move it, it'll just wiggle out a little bit. Like I said, I left the guard hairs and the under fur sort of all in there just to make the back end a little leggy. It's all very soft and it, it'll ride on the substrate hook point up in this fashion here. So we can just skid that along slowly as we're moving across the lake bottom, across the substrate. And uh, so often when you fish this pattern you may not get an actual hard tapping hit and all of a sudden the fly will just sort of feel like as if it's stuck. If you hold it and wait there for a moment you'll find that it'll move off on you and that's when you set the hook. Um, so, very good pattern for lakes. Uh, hope you enjoy that. Um, hope it's something that you find a little different. And uh, again, hoping that you'll take that out and give it a whirl and have some fun with it. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.